Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome back to our series on solid principles. In the previous video, we have explored how to identify and resolve Liskov substitution principle. Today we will continue our journey concentrating on the next principle which is interface segregation principle. So before we start refactoring the code to comply with interface segregation principle, let's just recall what interface segregation principle is all about. It basically says that no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use, which basically means that interfaces should be small and specific so that clients will be implementing only those which it needs. Let's see what it really means in terms of code. So here is a interface called as salary calculator. There are two classes, academic salary calculator and visiting salary calculator. Both of these classes implement this salary calculator interface. So if you go to the academic salary calculator, calculate salary is getting implemented properly, but the remaining functions of the salary calculator interface, that is generate pay slip, apply bonus, deduct taxes, they are also being forced to be implemented here because it actually implements salary calculator interface. And you can actually see that they are throwing a unsupported operation exception because academic salary calculator doesn't really need to implement generation of the pay slip, applying the bonus and calculating the TDS, that is deduct taxes. So it basically boils down to the problem that we have in our interface, which is salary calculator interface. It has too many functions defined in that particular interface. And that is the reason why whichever class or whichever interface implements this is basically forced to implement all these functions or methods, regardless of whether they really need to do it or not. So what is the solution? The solution is start splitting the interfaces and make them into much smaller interfaces with very relevant functionalities in those interfaces. So now what I can do is maybe I can remove this particular function, generate payslip and create a, another interface called as payslip generator and this will have the generate payslip interface function. In the same way, apply bonus, I will create another interface, bonus applier. I can now put apply bonus in this interface and deduct taxes. I can create a, another interface. Let me call it as TDS calculator. TDS basically stands for tax deduction at source and I can put deduct taxes under this interface. Now what happens is the class which needs a particular functionality to be implemented will have to only implement that particular interface. Now going back to the academic calculator, it needs only salary calculator and nothing else. So I can simply get rid of these things. In the same way, if I go back here, there is a visiting salary calculator. And once again, these all things are not needed anymore. You can later create a, another class which might really need to implement TDS calculator. So it needs to only implement that particular interface. That is how you basically resolve the interface segregation violation. There is another such thing here called as engagement strategy. It has got two functions, which is engage students and prepare materials. And there is a class which implements the engagement strategy. That is lecture engagement and workshop engagement. If you go to those lecture engagement, lecture engagement, engage students and prepare materials. It is being implemented. And in the same way, workshop engagement, you can see that prepare materials for the workshop. There is really no need to prepare the materials. It's a very on fly thing that happens in the workshops. So this is really not needed in this particular class, but we are kind of forced to implement it because we have implemented the engagement strategy interface. So what is the solution? Once again, split the engagement strategy. We can go back here and uh, what we can do is we can remove this, prepare materials and create a interface called as maybe material preparator interface and put prepare materials as a part of material preparator interface. 
And now what happens is this workshop engagement, if it doesn't need prepare materials, you can simply get rid of that. And in the same way, lecture engagement, if it needs to prepare the materials, then it will also implement material preparator. So now my class can selectively and granularly depend on the interfaces that it really needs. No class is forced to provide the implementation of the function just because it is implementing an interface and that interface has got that particular method. This is how you segregate the interfaces. That is the reason why it is called as interface segregation principle. Those who have watched the previous video on Lisco substitution principle and who are watching this interface segregation principle might actually feel that both of these actually look quite similar but there is a difference so let's spend some time trying to understand the subtle difference between lisco substitution principle and the interface segregation principle in the lisco substitution principle you had a course with a function get tenure and the postdoc course had to implement get tenure functionality even though it didn't need it and in case of interface segregation principle, you had a very large interface with many functionalities defined as a part of that particular interface. So any class that needed even one single calculate salary function had to also implement other functionalities even though it didn't need them. That is the reason why it was interface segregation principle violation. So in both the situations, it might look like you are being forced to implement functions with you really don't need. So now focusing on how we resolved LSP violation was we created another interface called as tenure provider and we then ensured that the class which needed the tenure actually implemented the tenure provider interface. So we split the class and created much finer interface so that the class which needs it can implement it. And in case of interface segregation principle, we basically split the interface into much finer interfaces and then ensured that the class implements only that interface which it needs. So in the both the cases, even though it looks like we are creating the interfaces as a part of refactoring to comply with the LSP or ISP, there is a subtle difference. In case of LSP, what we are basically trying to achieve is making the classes substitutable. And in case of ISP, we are trying to have smallest possible interface. There is a slight difference between the LSP and ISP. So if I try to put it in terms of how you identify a LSP violation, you look for methods in subclasses that are changing the behavior from the superclass. In case of ISP, you look for interfaces that force the classes to implement irrelevant methods. That is a subtle difference between how you can identify the LSP and ISP violations. Now coming to the refactoring, in case of LSP, you move the problematic method to a new class. And if necessary, you even form new interfaces with the problematic methods, if it makes sense. In case of ISP, you basically split the large interfaces into smaller interfaces and then you ensure that your class implements only the relevant interface. Going back here, this is exactly what we have done. So by now we have covered quite a ground in terms of refactoring the code for solid principles. The only last remaining part is dependency inversion principle, which we shall see in the next video. So stay tuned. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.